Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. This is the Hanwei Tiger Katana, the classic version of this sword. And before I get into the video, as is customary for me, a couple quick disclaimers. One, it's a review sample sent by Cast Siberia. Tip my hat and special thanks to them for doing so. It was sent to me to do this review. I didn't spend any money on it. If you think that makes me biased, at least you know right away. Uh, two, I study Japanese style swordsmanship. I have for quite a while. I've talked about swords, kind of focusing on katana on the internet for a while too, but I don't fancy myself an authority figure and an expert in this subject. This video is my musings and ramblings and thoughts thoughts on the sword, but it's just my opinion, so take that with that context in mind. Uh, the other bit you should know is that this sword is around $1,100 on Cult of Athena. I'll link it in the description down below. It could be more or less depending on when you buy it. Inflation is weird right now. So uh, at the moment, though, this is $1,100. If I wanted to buy one new from an authorized distributor like Cult of, Ath Cult of Athena, you could also buy them from Cast directly, but they have admittedly said they're not a retail outlet, so it tends to be a little bit more. If you go to Cult of Athena, you can get one brand new from them for around about $1,100, which is what I'm going to keep in mind as I think about are the pros good enough? Are the cons acceptable? And all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep in mind this is not an inexpensive sword. It's on the higher end side of things. It's certainly not the highest end, but it also is not a $100 sword. It's $1,100. And some of the, the benefits that you should see, see should be commensurate with a sword of that price. Um, so the video is going to be really geared toward trying to help you decide if something like this is worth your money or not. And the approach I'm going to have is I'm going to to show you all the up close bits and bobs and fits and features, which is what I typically do. Uh, it'll hopefully give you some idea of build quality and what to expect with the sword. And hopefully by then you really know if it's worth it or not. But from there, I will go and I will swing it around. I will practice EI with it. I'll talk about the experience of doing that if you are a practitioner or wanted to become one and were wondering if this would be a good tool to, to do so. Uh, I will then cut with it and I will push it to some degree. So I'm gonna cut the Tommy mats, water bottles, pool noodles, that kind of thing. And then some branches that are a little bit more aggressive than you might expect. Uh, a sword like this to be able to handle but I'm not going to break it I'm not going to wake it up whack it on the croquet stick of doom which is kind of my shtick on YouTube but I don't think many people are buying an $1,100 Hanway sword uh, with the intention of you know like super durability or something so I'm going to push it a little bit but I'm not going to push it to failure if that is wrong and you would find some value in seeing how much it can take before it falls apart please let me know but I have pushed it into the realm, into the realm of abuse, but not into the realm of silliness, I suppose. And that's uh, going to round out the the video. Then I'll give you my thoughts and tell you if I personally think it's worth it. But hopefully by that point you'll have seen enough to help you make up your own mind whether or not I like it. Um, so that is the plan. Hopefully it's interesting. And on with the reviewing. So as is customary for me, I'm going to start with a Kashra, the end cap, this pommel bit right here. And more or less, the Kashra is the lead into the fitting set, which is going to be a broader topic. But uh, suffice to say, I really like the fittings on this sword. I think they're classic and classy and also different and unique, but don't stand out in like a really crazy braggadocious way. But when you look up close, they do have a little bit of bling to them. They're really just well thought out and really well done and one of my favorite fitting sets from Hanway. Um, so I'm going to talk about it though, but Hanway, generally speaking, is known to do exceptionally good fitting sets. Their casting quality is precise and nice. Uh, if I talk, I'll talk about that when I get to the Suba a little bit because it's easier for me to give you a, 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 a comparison to, to go for when I say it looks nice. But suffice to say, I think they're generally well cast and well uh, made fittings in the realm of mass reproduction swords. Now, if these fittings were to be handmade and kind of hand carved out, it would be really easy for the, the Kashra and Fuchi alone to, to probably cost $1,100. So here you're getting a whole sword. I'm not complaining about them being cast. Um, that's the nature of a lot of the reproductions, but Hanwei tends to have some nicer looking things and they tend to do a nicer job of it. And that is absolutely present in the in the Kashra, the end cap here, as well as the rest of the fittings that you're going to see on the sword. Um, anyway, First, that has this kind of pockmarked kind of uh, pattern to it. I don't exactly know what it is, but it has this kind of organic-y stone texture to it, which I happen to really like. It gives a little bit of purchase, like you can absolutely feel it's rigid, but it's not sharp. It doesn't bite your hands. And overall, it's reasonably comfortable for use. But it, it does grab you a little bit, but not so much that it tears your skin. It also has Ito that runs through it in a cross pattern over the end of the knot, which I happen to like a little bit. It gives me the feeling that it's... a marginally more secure than when the uh, the pattern runs underneath the Kashra, and this one appears stuck on. So some Hanwei uh, fittings have come off, this one has not. I've been, as as you'll see in the video, rather abusive with the sword, and it's still uh, 
stuck on there and and quite good so it's also adhered with some sort of adhesive but it's tied down tight enough and has has not moved the transitions are not great i would say the ito becomes just a little bit bunchy towards towards the end and unfortunately the the ito and the way it's tied is one of the uh, the, the things that tends to be lacking in terms of mass reproduction swords, it's seldom done at a really, really high level, or at least not as high a level as the rest of the stuff on this sword. And unfortunately, that is true here. The Ito is uh, probably the, the largest disappointment, um, but the bunchiness down here is, is not really where where I really complain about it too much. It's it's a little bunchy, but acceptable. None of the transitions really overlap. It doesn't look... It doesn't look uh, Awful. It doesn't look really kind of amateur or anything like that. There's just a maybe a little excess material there, but generally speaking, things line up well. I also noticed that the uh, the core is carved in in such a way that the knots can lay reasonably flat, so they don't stand proud of the rest of the Ito. It's another little thing that I'm I'm glad Hanwei has done here. Uh, whoever assembled the core put it together in such a way that it at least had all the potential to be nice. So basically, when the uh, when the wooden core underneath the Ito, the silk wrap, is going into the Kashra, it's like carved in just a little bit because there are two knots on either side that are going to take up more space. And so there's there's a little like pothole that's made in, in the core and that leaves a little bit of space for those knots to rest so that they can still uh, look relatively, you know, clean and not stand out where you have this big kind of bulb sitting at the end. No unsightly bulges in your, in your Ito Maki, your, the, the wrap of your handle. But that will bring us to the rest of the handle. Now, the handle is long. That's generally not my favorite thing, but I've gotten kind of used to practicing with swords with kind of longer than I generally prefer handles. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It lets me use my forearm in different ways. It's kind of fun to practice with them from time to time, and that's the experience I've had with this one. I have enjoyed getting to practice with it from time to time. Um, well, not from time to time. I've practiced with it quite a bit over the last couple months. But the the handle is longer and it does move a little differently and you have to think about how you move with it. It's not my preference, but do know that they all seem to come with a relatively long handle. Uh, the handle shape is not too terrible. I would say it's big. It feel, fills my hand well, but it's not too big. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't break my grip. It doesn't feel like an axe handle. Overall, it feels reasonably well formed, but it doesn't have any kind of gentle sweeps and curves in hourglass shaping it's it's big and utilitarian and fits well and is reasonably ergonomic but kind of lacks some of the elegance that i've seen in, in other handle shapes from from hanway and other vendors the wrap itself uh, has diamonds that wander around a little bit i wouldn't say they're they're particularly clean they came in a way that was not honestly too disappointing i thought at first it looked quite nice but this uh is in my mind not great it, it gets a passing grade from usability i have used this for a couple months and it has not come unraveled or something like that however um, i do feel the ito moving around so if i push these uh if i push the knots around or even the just kind of the side of the ito, i can kind of move it around a little bit and what and i feel that when i'm moving it and it causes me to really kind of tense my grip up and so i fatigue a little quicker while i'm using this sword than i would if I, the ito wrap was tight um, and I would say that this is an opportunity for Hanway to, to resolve. I remember talking to, to Patrick at Hanway uh, some time ago, and there's some question around, you know, what do you mean, loose Ito? And so when I when I say that the Ito is unacceptably loose, I don't think that I should really be able to push the, the knot uh, much. Maybe a millimeter or two is kind of generally within the realm of acceptable for reproductions, even at a $1,000 price point. Uh, very seldom with any reproduction outside of like higher end custom or really, really nicer blades do you get something that's so rock solid you feel like you could stand on it. But that's the ideal. But acceptable is, you know, or good, I should say, is, you know, maybe a millimeter or two of travel. Uh, but in this case, I can I can push them, you know, like half a centimeter or, or something like that. And I can pull the Ito down and really displace and change the shape of the knots. And that is not ideal. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't come more unwrapped than, well, come unwrapped in some way. It still remains usable, but it does kind of maneuver around the shape of the diamonds changes. And it's just not, not as tight as as it should be. It should be much tighter and those things should should not move. Um, so with that said, there, you know, that's that's the, the largest disappointment here. Underneath the Ito though is Samegawa and it's not particularly large nodule Samegawa. I would say they're 
kind of small. Uh, this seems sporadic because I've had a number of Hanwei Tiger Katanas in the past. This is a, a sword that has moved through my collection a few times, and some of them have had larger nodule Semigawa skins. Some of them have had smaller. This one seems to be on the smaller size. Uh, I'm not complaining. I don't necessarily expect it to be particularly large, but when you're getting in the $1,000 plus price points, it's nice to see higher quality materials, larger nodules, semigawa skins, that kind of thing would be uh, appreciable to see. The uh, Manuki that are here are reasonably well cast as well. They have kind of a bamboo shoot of looking looking thing. They stand out as gold, and this uh, has gold accents on here that are reasonably tastefully applied, I would say. Hanwei doesn't finger paint them on, which I'll talk about more in the nothing grabs my eye. There's enough little gold accents here that uh, my eye doesn't inherently go to one specific thing. They always do a really good job of kind of telling a story on a sword and putting fittings on that uh, create a theme overall that don't look hodgepodge and oddly put together that really look intentional uh, and like they all, all belong together and, and balance the sword out visually in a way that I personally find appealing. So these have a really, you know, high contrast gold look to them, but it balances out with the other blingy gold that you end up seeing on the sword. There are two uh, Makugi pegs in here. They came out reasonably easily. I could take the handle off. The other bit that I would note about the uh, handle itself, the core, is that it was cracked. Now, I didn't look at it when I got it brand new. I looked at it after I was somewhat abusive to it. So it could have happened when I was whacking it into branches and that kind of stuff. Um, but the core does have a crack along the side of it. What does that mean? That means that, well, the, the core is not as tight as it could be. And that may have some impact on durability on if the, you know, if the handle's going to split or other, other things. It's not ideal to have the wood that the handle is made out of uh, cracked. But again, I did not look at this when I first got the sword. I looked at it post. That's the footage that you're seeing is after I've kind of cut some branches and stuff like that with the sword. So it well could have happened uh, somewhat into the abusive side of usage. I didn't feel the crack and I was kind of surprised to find it there. It's not a huge one, but it is certainly present. Uh, but I didn't feel it like creaking. I didn't feel the Nakago rattling around in the handle. And those are often the symptoms that go along with having a broken or cracked um, core in your, in your handle. I didn't feel any of those. And it looks like I could probably rectify it by putting some wood glue in and making sure, you know, putting some clamps on it or something like that. So anyway, do know that I noticed that the handle was cracked. Uh, moving up from there, the Fuchi is reasonably well placed. Again, it has just a, an exceptional look that is thematically consistent throughout the course of, of all of the fittings on the, on the sword. And it's well placed. It's not bunched up. Nothing overlaps. The transitions are quite good. It does look like there's a little bit of waver in some of the casting, but nothing, nothing uh, that I can really be too picky about. Overall, the, the quality of fittings is still... Uh, really, really pleasant. So I'm going to talk about the Suba now, and there's a lot that I like about the Suba. It's really the highlight in terms of the quality of fittings here. It has a big, bold tiger that faces outward. On the opposite side, there's, you know, some other scenes, but behind this really kind of black patina or paint, whatever it happens to be that's on the on the Suba, there's uh, more or less what what is supposed to resemble carvings of a nature scene and there's just a lot of depth that goes all the way around on top of that this texture on the rim of the suba wraps around the suba it has a three-dimensionality that a lot of vendors just don't seem to have a lot of times it seems like it's pressed or cast and the rim of the suba is you know full of sanding marks or it doesn't have anything here but here it maintains the quality of casting all the way around the Suba. I really happen to like it. I think it's very handsome. And I have another Suba here that I can compare it to that is of a different manufacturer, but a little bit more of the, the parts bin kind of things that you would see from the fittings distributor in Longchuan. And you can just see the, the quality of difference in terms of detail here. So I have another, I don't know if it's a dragon, a shishi dog, a tiger, but some other animal, and you can just make out the difference in eyes and how, and the posing of the tiger and the, the details in the fur and the claws and the paws. And all of those like little things are much more much more detailed, much more intricate in terms of the casting quality than is achieved on the other. And the gold detailing is both brighter and more consistently applied. And so uh, Hanwei, if you're doing gold details, I think tends to do them 
quite a bit better. Dragon King also does really quite well. Uh, but a lot of the other vendors really miss the mark when they use these kind of generic fittings from the fittings vendor. They're neither special or bespoke, but also I think just lack the quality that I, I see in the Hanway stuff. It's it's really quite good. I like the story. I like the posing. It looks Japanese. It looks, um, it is still cast. I, I want, it is still like a, you know, a shadow of, uh, a really high-end Suba, but they certainly come a lot closer to emulating it than than other folks do, and it's appreciated here. I, I, I really like the detail on the Suba. Now, moving up from there, I'm going to talk about the Habaki. The Habaki is just a simple brass Habaki. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for Hanway to zazz up and maybe change some of the models, is just do a slightly different Habaki, something more than the standard brass collar, uh, put some grooves or some pattern in it or something that, that just adds a, a touch of bling would be appreciated. Now, I've had lots of Hanwei swords in my collection over time and I've seen this Habaki a number of times and it's just lost some of the the luster so I'd I'd love to see uh, if any fitting could change just find some different patterns on those Habaki put a tiger in it so, something would be would be appreciated than the standard brass uh, the complaint that I have with the Habaki though really isn't the way it looks it's perfectly functional and if you don't have a pile of swords over over you know decades then you probably won't become as irritated by seeing that same habaki all the time uh, but my complaint is that it doesn't go in so it's not the habaki doesn't fit but that I, something is uh, probably like a piece of shipping plastic or maybe some original coating that the sword came in to protect it is stuck in the bottom of the suba and i can't get the uh i can't get the <laughs> the uh, habaki to go all the way in and I had the same problem with the Dragon King sword I think that might be why they were sent to me I don't know uh, if they were like factory seconds or something but this is entirely possible that that's why they came my way is because they had uh, some some issue with the the scabbard or some scuffs or something like that uh, but that is the only problem that I have I can't tighten it up and therefore I don't know how tight the scabbard is or how well the habaki fits because it feels like something is bumping into it at the tip that's preventing me from putting it all the way in Next up, I'm going to talk about the Koiguchi, the mouth area of the scabbard. And unlike other scabbards that you might see out there, this has a kind of metal fitting, a special Koiguchi, Kurigata, and Kojiri. The uh, mouth area, the end cap, and then the little fitting that the Sageo fits through on the, on the scabbard. Those are made of metal in this case and have a fitting set that is of equal quality and matches the same theme as the rest of the fittings. And again, something that you see on the higher end Hanwei fitting or Hanwei pieces is they often do this. And I, I love this additional uh, piece here. I, I wish other vendors did it. Uh, Koiguchi, Kurigata, and Kojiri are things that are often missed and nobody bothers with them, it seems. But Hanwei does, and it's I, I love it. So uh, it is a metal fitting. It's a little weird to do EI with, but you don't notice it after a while. Uh, it does, if you're doing no-to and you're putting the sword away, sometimes you run the tip over the metal. You, It it degrades certainly less than a, a horn piece does, but you can see every mark of your, your failure to properly put the sword away. Um, the metal fitting as well was not super secure when I got it. Again, this might be one of the things that happened or was one of the reasons I got it, but the first time I went out and did EI with it, the metal Koiguchi just popped off. <laughs> and so I glued it back on with some super glue that I had handy and it hasn't moved since. It's been fine from there, but the first time I used it, it popped right off and it popped off in such a way where it didn't damage the lacquer or anything like that and it was relatively easy for me to re-secure and it's been stable ever since so i don't know if it got knocked around or the adhesive that they use wasn't sufficient i'm not entirely sure but it went back together easy enough and i tend not to be particularly crafty so my ability to do handy things is, is very limited and the fact that i could attach it means that just about anyone with two brain cells could probably do the same uh, moving down from there, though, the Saya has some other cool features. So, as I've noted, it has a Kurigata, and the Kurigata has Shiridome that are stuck in and glued. I don't know if they're glued or pressure fit in, but either way, they don't move around. So, when I removed and untied the knot, the presentation knot that it came in, they didn't flop around and scratch the scabbard. I love that. It's also fit and lacquered around in a, in a really clean way. I don't see, you know, 
muddiness or, or crappiness the paint work on here is is really quite well done even if i get up close to it the Segeo is a reasonable quality. Uh, Hanway has done some custom Segeo for various swords, and I would love to see a, a tiger version rather than a simple black Segeo. However, the Segeo is nice. It's of a good quality. It, it's a little bit short for me, but it's not it's not a bad quality Segeo. Just be nice to see, you know, maybe some gold thread integrated in or some sort of tiger or some sort of nicer Segeo for uh, for this, this sword. The Saya also has some hidden gems in here that you might not see, but there's uh, like falling bamboo leaves that are speckled in throughout the Saya, and they're kind of, you know, put in in not a random pattern, but they seem random. And it's something you have to get really, really close to see, but on closer inspection, there are these little gold detailed uh, bamboo leaves that are falling. And so I love that little subtlety. It's uh, clean and classy and it doesn't stand out it's not very like braggadocious or anything like that when this belt when this sits in your obi or on your wall but if you get up close and you're looking at it and you're appreciating it there's all these little hidden features in here and the extra little bamboo leaves that are on here are appreciated the bushido has something similar they have a little bit more easy to spot uh sakura leaves i believe like cherry blossoms falling uh, they stand out better on the gold and, and brown for some reason than they do against the black. Uh, they're lacquered maybe a little bit deeper in, however I can see them and as I've noted it's it's an appreciable thing. The Kojiri, the end cap down here, is not as well placed so it looks like it's glued on and then lacquered on and the, the paintwork is really quite good but the sizing looks a little big and so usually it wouldn't like stand out a millimeter around it would uh, kind of butt in and be relatively even however it's it's reasonably well put on there's not a ledge that can exactly catch on things uh, but it does look a little odd to the eye uh, if i'm being really really picky about it at the same time it's it's well put together and not something that i would i would nitpick too much again all of these fittings have the same kind of uh pocketed stone look to them that that well they all have it <laughs> so basically it runs uh, thematically consistently throughout the entire sword right down to the kojiri and a metal kojiri is something i personally like i do a lot of seated kata and so if i'm using a sword it's not uncommon for me to you know if i'm doing it wrong bang the tip of my scabbard into the ground and horn and paint chip really easy but the metal even though it can get scratched and scuffed uh, it tends to hold up quite a bit better to dummies like myself sometimes banging the the tip of the scabbard into the ground banging the kojiri into the ground when it hits it the metal holds up just quite a bit better to it so uh this could be because it's somewhat ornate could be degraded there but at the same time i think it's going to hold up better it's going to be much less likely to chip or break off than than some other if it were just paint or if it were horn so moving up from there i'm going to talk about the blade the pointy pointy stabby part so this is 29 and a half inches long, which is a very comfortable length for me. The handle makes it a little bit weirder, but the blade itself is a very, very comfortable length for me to use. The blade has some features on it, which are really quite nice. It has folded steel. The Hara comes out reasonably well. It's easy to see in most lights. The Hamon, the the temper line running along the edge of the blade is etched on in a way that is kind of frosty. Now. I, when I cut with it, I got sap on the blade and later I cleaned it. And when I cleaned it, I had to be a little aggressive with the cleaning. And so that Hamon is, at least in its uh, high contrast, very easy to see in any light kind of kind of way, has rubbed off somewhat. It's still very present. And I happen, I think, like it more when it's not as stark and kind of etched on almost. Uh, but I had to do that myself, <laughs> which was actually an accident of cleaning, but I don't happen to mind it. Either way, it is differentially hardened. It's folded. Those folds are easy to see. The polish that it came with was also easy to see. I, I think the frosty hamon that they put on obscures some of the details that are in, well, some of the metallurgical effects that are under there in terms of how the differentially hardening works. Uh, you don't necessarily see as much detail as you would in like a really nice Japanese sword polish, but it does give a similar effect and is not uh, ugly to look at. The blade also has a bohi. It runs up and terminates reasonably evenly on the near the kasaki. I don't think the kasaki is polished in a, in a way that is very flattering. I would love for Hanway to improve the quality of the polish around the kasaki to make a really crisp yukote to have uh, the the polishing that I, I see on higher end Japanese swords and even some very affordable Chinese swords that have long trun. I think there's some opportunity to improve the polishing here. 
Uh, the tip, though, one thing Hanwei does is it tends to make them swell a little bit. It's a little bit more reinforced, and that's not a thing that very many vendors do. Hanwei still does it, and they also have this little polishing effect where uh, the the spine or the back of the uh, kasaki has a slightly different polish to it, and that is something a lot of a lot of folks don't do, but Hanwei uh, still does on many of their higher end sorts, and it's appreciated. They do a lot of little details here, a lot of things that I still think though. This sword, the Tiger Classic, has been around for a really long time, and in that time, uh, the, the level of polishing that I've seen from the Zisei's, the Dragon Swords, the uh, e even Ryan Sword recently has put out some some stuff around five hundred dollars that is you know kind of blows this polish out of the water in terms of how how pretty it is. And so I I think there's opportunity here if you want to see some of the metallurgical effects here, which I think people buying an eleven hundred dollar folded steel sword like this do to to really bring out a little bit more of the character inside what what Hanway is doing here rather than the frosty hamon that they've they've used for a number of years. The other thing I like about this sword is the dimensions and those are included in the description down below, but this just isn't it's not necessarily an order of magnitude different than a lot of the other swords out there, but it's just a little little different at the base, a little different at the tip, and feels a little different in the hand. Has just a just enough difference in curvature to feel special. Hanway doesn't do the same 28 inch sword with the same <laughs> sorry with the same width. They're similar, but the the things are just a little bit different with Hanway and with Dragon King as well. That uh, they don't fall in line with the exact same shape as everything else. Even though from a distance it probably looks like it, it's just different enough uh, where it gives me the vibe they're doing their own thing, and I, and I do happen to really like it. So some other things to note about features in the blade. Hanway, uh, as well, has little ripples in the surface. It's a sign that they're maybe more handmade than some others are, but a lot of blades, even less expensive ones, uh, have very glass smooth surfaces. This Hanway blade did not, but it came sharp. Those surface ripples are very minor. You have to be kind of anal retentive to, to be looking for them and see them, and they didn't really impact usage whatsoever. And that brings me, I suppose, to using it. So I'm going to start with Iaido here. And as a practice tool, it's not bad. My main complaint would be one that the Kojiri came off. I mentioned that when I when I talked about it. The uh, Sorry, the Koiguchi, the mouth of the, the Saiya, not the Kojiri, the end cap. Uh, but that came off. Once I glued it back on, it was fine. And also that little end piece doesn't let me sheathe the sword all the way, at least not without really jamming it in there. And and so it's it's not that part is not pleasant to use. However, if I don't think about that and just the the other aspects of it, if that end wasn't if the end could go all the way in in the scabbard, then uh, it would generally be pleasant. It's not particularly rattly. It's relatively smooth. It doesn't make raspy sounds as I draw the the sword in and out. Uh, and the metal koiguchi is easy enough to get used to. Uh, it's not as as fun as horn, I guess, because if you drag the sword across it, it makes kind of a scrapey noise, but you learn not to do that then. The other thing that irritated me in using it is I could feel that the Ito felt a little squirmy in my hand, so I would hold on to the sword really, really tight, um, but when I did that, like, it didn't move around, and I could, I could do it, but the Ito could stand to be a little bit tighter, and it is at a tightness where it's not failing. Uh, if it had over the course of these months, I'd be a little bit more concerned. This is a prime candidate for me to just spray some lacquer on it and, and tighten it up, or maybe uh, beeswax, I've heard, it can also do it if you rub that in. That would change the look and the feel of the sword. It'd be maybe less comfortable to use or tackier, but it would also tighten that up, and I probably would not fatigue as quickly while I'm using the sword because I wouldn't have to hold it so tight. Generally speaking, all the other aspects of using the sword, though, were pleasant. I swung it around. It's loud and easy to hear. It draws and sheaths, with the exceptions I've already noted in mind. Uh, but apart from that, if you were to buy one and it didn't have that issue, I would say it would be a reasonably comfortable training tool. There are things that I don't like about the, it that are really subjective, though. The longer handle, I would want one that was shortened down just a little bit. Uh, and this might be something that I send off to have the handle shortened. It's possible that that could be done. Uh, and if it were, you know, maybe around like an 11 inch handle and the Ito were tighter, I think this sword would be uh, something I would really enjoy using for EI. It's longer than the typical sword is. Often they're 27, 28 inches. This one is a little bit more my size. It's very loud. It's pretty to look at. Um, there's just a couple tweaks that would have to be made to do that. But in the event that you buy one and it is absent, the little stop, the, <laughs> the Koiguchi stays on and the Ito is tighter, uh, you have yourself a very fun training tool. So now I'm going to talk about cutting with the sword, and more or less it cut really well. Now you wouldn't expect a sword to really be 
uh, stopped by water bottles and pool noodles and stuff. But overall, I would just say it, it cut reasonably well. And it's not always that you get a sword that is a reasonable training tool and loud, but also cuts well in this one, just happens to. Uh, it sailed through pool noodles. It was easy for me to stay on target and hit the things I wanted to. It moved well. I could tell if my edge alignment was good, which I think helps me have consistency in my cuts because I can tell when I'm doing it well, when I'm not. Uh, I do have to hold it tight, but it does index well. I can tell where the edge is. It has not quite just an oval uh, grip. It has, it's a little thinner near where the edge is. So it really locks into my grip and I can tell right where that edge is. And I can feel if I'm slightly out of alignment when I'm doing some of the cuts and correct. Um, I'm not doing perfect performance, but at the same time, better than better than my average is. And a lot of that is due to the shape and how this, how this sword is designed. And it, it works well to cut water bottles, pool noodles and the like. Tatami, it wasn't super sharp, so I found myself having to kind of lean into it a little bit. I didn't take any honing stones to it, but it would perform better if I stropped it or if I if I took like a ceramic rod and went over it and deburred it or something like that. I would imagine I could get a little bit more out of it performance-wise. I could still absolutely cut Tatami though. I threw some bad cuts at it and the sword did not bend or have any problems whatsoever. Uh, it wasn't the funnest to cut Tatami with, but this is a sword profile that doesn't do the work for you. And so it, it's forcing me to do the technique better and correctly and swing with intent. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you want that in your training it's it i have to focus on other things and i have to do them all right uh, to use this sword unlike say a practical xl where i can kind of let the sword do some of the work work for me i don't have to do everything as as well uh, i can i can swing a little with a little less uh chutzpah and and maybe be a little bit more accurate and the sword will take care of some of the rest for me but this one doesn't. At the same time, it has a profile that is maybe a little bit more durable than some of those, those other shorts. So uh, talking about that, as I move into cutting branches, I, I brought it to some branches that were down. And this is important because it's like older dead wood and it's not soft and it doesn't cut easy and it's also kind of cold outside. So uh, those things tend to make the blade a little bit weaker and the wood a little harder to cut. And it's important to keep that context in mind because the sword held up really well. Um, this branch is probably, I don't know, three, three and a half, maybe four inches in, in diameter in spots. Uh, it's got some knots and stuff like that in it, but I'm, I'm whacking into the branch. And in some cases, I'm able to make it through in one cut. But the important thing here is I didn't make it through in all the cuts, and the sword is still perfectly straight. There's no twists, there's no bends, and this is a differentially hardened sword. It's not supposed to be particularly hard to get these things to bend or twist. That's a thing that happens if you cut really hard targets and fail to do so, or do so poorly, is a bent sword. And this sword is not bent at all. So the way it's tempered, the way it's designed, the way it's made, it is a sturdy thing that seems well-crafted. Um, so I was really impressed by that, actually, because it's not... You know, I've had this KC 120 steel before, and I haven't found it to be particularly resilient to bending. I remember bending the, the um, Tori XL that I used quite a bit uh, when I was using a sword like that for cutting. And this one isn't bending, despite me doing uh, some bad cuts on tatami and really stupid cuts on a, on a dead old piece of wood in the cold. So uh, kind of impressed with how, how well it held up, and tip of my hat to Hanway on that one, because I was expecting it to bend. The, that's really the extent of what I cut though, and I, I thought that is abusive enough and probably beyond the targets that most people are going to cut with this <laughs> over a thousand dollar sword from Hanway. But uh, if you would find value in me pushing it further, let me know. Let me know what value you would find it in. It's certainly something that I'm uh, happy to reconsider later on. But it is nice to have these things intact because I can use them as comparison tools to other swords. So when people ask me questions about what's better, this or that, I don't have just a broken pile of mush to compare it to. Uh, anyway, that's going to be all the stuff that I can really share with you. I've talked about the bits and bobs and fits and features, about using it for EI and about cutting with it. And hopefully at this point, you have enough to make up your own mind on if it's worth your money or not. But it's time for me to answer that question myself. And personally, uh, no. Uh, it's I would I would say no on this one. There there were too many little things that went wrong. The Koiguchi coming off, uh, the Ito being a little bit loose and not being able to put the sword all the way in the in the scabbard. However, the sword not going all the way in the scabbard would be something that any distributor would probably take the sword back to correct. Ito I'm not a hundred percent sure on, but I, I hope that improves. Um, and the Koiguchi was relatively easy to put on and may not be a problem uh, if for you. It's not something that always happens. I guess I'll say that. But apart from those things, 
yes, I actually really, really like the sword. If it weren't for those, and honestly, like if the handle was just a little bit shorter, uh, this sword would be a, a really awesome contender for me to use to practice EI when I want to use a live blade. It is really noisy. It has a not a delicate, dainty, light sword feel, but it's also not so heavy I can't use it for a few hours at a time. Uh, it has a beautiful set of fittings that I like the look of, but that also gives some depth. If somebody asks to see your sword, there's a lot that you can talk about and be enamored with in it and has, uh, you know, a story to tell in it that is, is pretty cool and little little Easter eggs to find in the sword as you're looking. It's also folded and that folded steel is done well and seems to hold up to aggressive cutting and it can hold an edge really quite well because I did some dumb stuff with it and the edge hasn't diminished any more. Well, it hasn't gotten any sharper, but it hasn't really gotten any duller either, which I've been quite happy with. So I think there's a ton there and I think it's very, very close to being a recommend, but there were some things that went wrong that I don't think should go wrong in a sword that is $1,100. That shouldn't go wrong in any sword for that matter, but um, I, I certainly think that given the over $1,000 price point, the expectations are a little higher and those things would, uh, would deter me. But I should also again preface that that may be the reason that this one was sent to me because, <laughs> because I probably got a, uh, something that, that wasn't as sellable to another customer. So uh, if you like the other things about the sword, or maybe if you like the longer handle, then um, this this is something worthy of consideration, particularly if you're a practitioner. I would say as well, it is it does really make me think that, you know, since I know some folks that can do modifications on swords, that maybe I should ask and say like, hey, can this handle be lowered and tightened up a little bit? Because then I, I think I have a really amazing training tool that I will actually enjoy and, and potentially use quite a bit that might end up in my dojo bag uh, more often than not. Anyway, uh, those are my thoughts. Hopefully it's been interesting. Again, special thanks to the folks at Cast Siberia for sending this sword my way. I know it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows throughout the review, but the sword really does have a lot to offer. It's also some of the classic swords that I used to admire in magazines, and it's fun to, been a, to, to have one around that I get to one review, but also share and push and like do cool stuff with. It's been a real treat to review, and so hopefully you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Cheers, and thanks for watching.